Hi, it's Hamish McDonald here. I'm the cartoonist for Strategic Coach, and I'm here today to describe to you our process for creating the cartoons in our Ambition Series books that come out every quarter. So we begin with a fast filter, which is Dan Sullivan's quick way of describing to us the elements that he sees in a chapter. So he'll provide one of these to the writers uh, when he's being interviewed for the book, but he also gives me one, and this is what we use to create the cartoons from. So Dan and I will be on a Zoom call together. I'll bring up my screen and we'll look at his fast filter. And from that, we'll kind of come up with one of these uh, kind of a, a doodle cartoon brief together uh, as he describes kind of how he sees these ideas working together and how they, they'll map out across. It's quite often we'll use the, a two page spread across uh, two pages inside the book. And so once I have this, I can go to paper. And here, I, I use a website called thispersondoesnotexist.com, which is an AI that, that takes, I guess, a zillion pictures of people, and it, it creates these absolutely photorealistic pictures of people who don't exist. So I'm not worried about uh, portraying a real person or you know, infringing on their rights or privacy, and they look a little more real than stock photo people. So I find that really helpful in choosing a diverse group of people to portray uh, without having to do endless Google searches. I, I've printed out a bunch of these beforehand and keep a little deck of them. So here's me using a red pencil just to, to work out the geometries of the page because there are going to be a couple of panels floating across this two-page spread. Uh, so for no particular reason, I use the red for the sort of geometric elements. And uh, then I'll, yeah, I kind of rough out things like there's an arrow here in the background but then i use a blue to do my underdrawing uh, which is a, a thing i've learned from from hard experience that it's much better to to use a non-photo blue pencil these back in the day cartoonists would use them because they didn't photocopy of course now we have scans so that doesn't really apply but i find it's very helpful to to kind of underdraw first before committing to my final lines because i can change things up and kind of get a feel for how things fit together so um, here's me jarring our little friend and you know trying to make it look somewhat like her and uh, here i'm putting the lettering in first before placing the character which is another thing i've learned through hard one experience it's like don't put all the people in first even though they're fun to draw because you can leave the important information out and have to squish it in so i'm doing my lettering and then putting my our friend in here and uh this has this been a a challenge for me as a cartoonist is to learn to draw a person multiple times and have them still look roughly like the same character. So here she's she's interacting with the the germ of a thing. So here I'm I'm just noting the the, the title and chapter of the book because uh, and this is for Deep DOS Innovation. It's our next chapter uh, title from Strategic Coach. Um, I, quite often uh, our clients will get in touch with me and say that they liked a particular page and I'm very happy to send them the original artwork because I don't have any use for it once I've scanned it and made my digitals. Um, although sometimes the, the final image changes quite a bit on screen from what I've done on, on paper. So this is me working on arrows and stuff, committing my, my lettering here, a thought bubble, I'm drawing my wee, my wee woman. And she's working with, this is, I, I, we're trying to come up with a way to represent a danger because there are multiple dangers coming at you every day and each day you can pick one and choose that as the, the danger that you're going to eliminate that day. So this woman is doing that. So that was page one. And here's me working on page two, which will be on the other facing uh, page of the, the two page spread, kind of working out my proportions. And again, because I'll do this stuff digitally inside the program that I'll use in a little bit, uh, it, it doesn't matter too, too much. For me, the, the characters are thing, the thing that I find uh, just work out much better if I draw them on paper because drawing them on screen, it's, it's not what I did when I was eight years old, so I, I don't have the same feel for it. Um, so here I'm drawing a woman. Stars are hard. You'll see my, my cheat shortcut later on. Uh, so drawing her from two more different perspectives um, as we go from left to right across the page following the arrow. This is her working with her, 
her danger for the day and kind of figuring out where she wants to go by the end of the day. And again, if you're a strategic coach client and there's a particular page you like, just get in touch with me and uh, I'm happy to, to send you the original if it's still around. Yeah, this is very rough, my, my circle. Uh, I broke my wrists a couple of years ago and so uh, I've, while I've made a full recovery, I'm very happy. You'll see this hideous scar on my hand here, but also uh, it's, it's hard to do a full circle, <laughs> just freehand. Uh, I've got a, a metal plate that kind of drags my arm in one direction. So here's a program that I use for doing the cartoons. It's called Clip Studio Paint. Uh, it's, it's by a Japanese company called Celsius. And uh, it's amazing. It's kind of like Photoshop for cartoonists. So yeah, I'm bringing in from the Photos app. I'm working on an iPad here because um, the full program is available on the iPad and you can use the pencil, the Apple Pencil, which is amazing. It's really good. So I've brought in the scans of my original paper uh, cartoons and here I'm using the, <clears throat> the vector features in the program. So there are two types of images. There's raster or bitmap and vector. Uh, so vector images are great because instead of being made up of little tiny pixels, it's really just uh, describing the thing geometrically. So here where I'm working with curves, it just cares about it just being that shape of a curve and it doesn't matter how big or small it is. So I can change them and, you know, as you can see, I'm, I'm able to edit it by grabbing little points. And uh, this really helps make for nice, smooth li lines and, uh, again, keeping the picture editable in case Dan and I look at it later and decide to make changes. So I'm just filling in the endpoints here so I can use the paint bucket and fill that in. And then I'll make another layer that's an alpha channel. So it's basically like a mask. So I can then shade them and stuff and I'll have a stencil for that. And then here there's a, there's a brilliant feature that lets you create cartoon panels just as a shape but it also kind of crops them out. So you can do all your painting and everything and it doesn't, it doesn't go outside the lines because staying in the lines is uh, still a concern, even as an adult uh, who gets to draw in color all day for his job, which don't tell anyone I get to do that. It's, it seems, does, doesn't seem real to me. So here I'm dropping in my pencil originals in these boxes and you can see how the program crops out everything that doesn't fit inside the box. So I, I use the, the, the graphite layer and then I I've recorded an action that just turns it to blue and creates paint, uh, levels over top of that so you can see I'm using the vector tools to draw the ink lines and it just makes them super smooth and again like I did with the arrows I can grab any of the points on them and change them after the fact I mean you can go crazy by just twiddling with everything endlessly but um, I just, I do find, as I was saying before, that, that drawing in pencil is just so much what I relate to that it's much easier to start with pencil. And then I'm, you know, kind of painting in and paint bucketing my woman here and uh, using another watercolor layer to, to do the shading and then, um, you know, coloring in her hair, filling the points using the watercolor tool to, to shade again. I haven't yet figured out what my color scheme is going to be for the page. So I'm busy painting her but I haven't committed to what her shirt is going to be like because I don't really know what the arrows and backdrop are going to be. Uh, a, a better graphic designer would have a scheme beforehand, but I've, I've found I, I just kind of like to feel it out as I go and compare with the other pages in the project and see what, what feels right. So here I'm doing the, my ink lines again and again and again to try and get them perfect, which is not achievable. And, uh, you know, working with her hands and you can see I'm varying from my original bit as, as I find a, a kind of a better fit. Correcting, correcting, correcting forever. And here's me using the vector tools to like just tweak things here and paint her in. Um, using my watercolor tool to put in some shading, paint her eyes, her hair.
in my lettering. The, the program is incredible, but uh, because it's originally created for uh, Japanese users, the text tools are a little wonky. You have to manually put in line breaks and stuff like that. And so here I'm, I'm varying from my, my pencils where I realize uh, word bubble doesn't have to fill up the whole space. It's probably better broken across two lines. There's me painting her. Oh, by the way, I've sped this up five times, so I don't actually draw this fast. <laughs> I'm fast, but I'm not that fast. So here's her looking inside the danger to, to find out what there is that she can work with for the day. Tweaking the placement of things and then painting her in. And uh, yeah, tweak, tweak, tweak. And this program does a zillion things, many of which I still haven't even discovered and I've been using it for about five years or so, just every single day. And uh, I'm still discovering stuff. Oh, so actually, um, one of the great features of this program is it lets me organize all the pages. This is the, the EX version of the program. It lets me organize all the pages in the project all together. But um, when I created this page, I actually created it twice as wide as any single page because I find with a, with a two page spread like this, it's easier to do it nine inches wide and then split it into two four inch wide uh, images after the fact, just so that I can make all my changes and everything's consistent across the two pages. I used to do them separately uh, because uh, it had never occurred to me that I should do it as one whole thing and then split it in half. And it was really hard to get things to, to line up properly and reproduce the colors and everything. So here's me trying to get the angle right with the the arrows underneath. Moink, I need it. Tweaking. And then I'll, yeah, make a mask of these so that I can paint them in separately later on. I'll paint in her. Shading. I still haven't committed to my colors for the page, so I know this is coming soon. <laughs> Regardless of the colors of the page, gray boots will probably be fine. And now I'm drawing the last character, or iteration of the character, just tweaking from the original a little bit. The jig is almost up. I'll have to choose my page colors soon. Ah, uh, hands. <laughs> Second hardest only to faces, not, not including horses or cars. So here uh, I can save a bunch of things that I've already drawn and reuse them. That's kind of a template thing. So again, like stars are, are really tricky to draw evenly from scratch, so I just did one properly once and saved it in that folder of uh, pre-saved things. There are certain things that I know I'm going to use over and over again, like the caption at the top of the page or word bubbles, stars, arrows, things we use a lot in our diagrams to uh, suggest concepts in the, in, the, in the chapters. Here's me doing the captions, and I'll probably any time now be checking with the uh, the other pages in the project just to see oh yes and here I'm I'm splitting the circle and the back in half because there are kind of two sides to this this concept sphere and then confidence I'm like how am I going to fit that mm, the words are two different sizes so <laughs> this is this is where again not having any hard and fast rules I, I'm just kind of making up as I go along and I've, I've sort of figured out here oh like I think I want to do like a, a red and blue where red is the, the kind of like the burning uh, emotion of the fear that's related to the danger that you're looking at for the day which is something that you risk it's a loss that you risk facing during the day so here's all the dangers coming at her so I'm trying to make them look kind of, kind of angry, like like meteors or something, 
and uh, but she's calmly looking at them. Oh, the glow feature. I use that so much. Uh, any layer you can apply any like you can multiply the colors against what's beneath, but you can make them glow. And I use this a lot because it's it's very special effecty. And, you know, so now she's in this kind of volcanic hailstorm, but she's very calm because she's just going to pick one one danger that she's going to work with this day. And it's this one. And I'll make this glow appropriately. Yeah. Crank that up. And uh, the lovely thing with Clip Studio Paint is it has these great watercolor brushes. So this is all digital, but it looks very much like, to me, like um, uh, traditional work on paper. So I'll just put a mask under my bubble here so I can make it, my thought bubble, so I can make it white. Put in some of this stuff that I had in the previous panel just for consistency and tone it back a bit. Then paint her, shade her, and here's what's inside the danger that she's facing this day. I'll paint in the background, I'll mask out my thought bubble, and I want to make that glow. Make it glow, yeah. That's just so cool. I can't do that on paper. Right, and so here I've put a gradient that's coloring the, the layers underneath because I want to show that it's, we're now transitioning from the fear that you're facing with, with a danger to the confidence that you'll feel when she's resolved it by the end of the day. And here's me doing a ton of glowy things and just, you know, there, there's no science to this. I'm just, you know, I'm putting some highlights on her, but I just kind of go back and forth and back and forth, trying things to see what, what feels right and uh, erasing bits as they go. Um, you know, so here it's like, oh, oops, it's up in front of her, so I move it behind her. And none of this was planned except for what we saw in the, the sort of doodle brief. Then, you know, because this is all masking her out, I have to paint it out so it's not obstructing our view of her. Tweak, 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 tweak. <laughs> this is how I spend my days. <laughs> I, I love it, but... Uh, if you've gone to the bathroom and come back by now and you're looking at something in another window, I totally understand. I'm not hurt. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out how to, how to place these words. So uh, I do know that I have Dan's eyes going to be looking at this after the fact, which is a great help because quite often, and this will, you'll see this later on, that there are things where I kind of do my best, but then there's, there's a point where I, I'm kind of stumped. I'm like, I don't know how to fill this in. So here's a bunch of concentric circles. We use this a lot as a motif, as, as things kind of radiate outwards, as they have an effect. And uh, I saved that beforehand. So that saved me a whole lot of doodling on the spot. And then making a two-part left and right background here, and I'll paint that in kept coloring the captions so that they correlate to the pages just to, to create some visual changes between the left and right. And I'm coloring in my arrows and now you can see because I've made masks of them I can just spray paint these these kind of rough tones on them and uh, it doesn't go inside the lines. Hey kids, <laughs> you don't even have to learn to color inside the lines you just need alpha channels or masks as they're also called. So I'm painting her in on the right-hand page. What color should her trousers be? I have no idea. Let's try a whole bunch. Got to put a shadow. So that, and uh, so this is where Dan will have briefed me in the in the doodle on the on the wording for these. And so by taking making commitments and taking actions, she she's dealing with the. Uh, the danger that she picked out to work with for the day. And here's me putting this, this gradient to color what's underneath again, so that we see her transitioning from the red of the danger to the, the blue of her confidence as she's dealt with it. Here's me working with her following the danger through the day. So with each of these, we're trying to come up with a, a visual metaphor for the thing so that we're not, because uh, 
because quite often my preference would be just to, to draw people doing a concrete thing or you know being in a in a real space but i i like dan's ability to to kind of look at it from a higher level and make it more universal so that people aren't thrown away by well that's people in that situation but i'm in a different situation so we kind of keep it in a sort of metaphorical uh, higher level so that it's more more applicable to more people and here she's leaving behind these sparks i'm sort of painting them out as i go and then the, the, the more, more glow effect from the the danger that she's following has been painting in her clothes now that I've decided what color they are and you can see there's a, there's a sort of a quite large palette of colors that uh, I've reduced our our set to because these are the ones that we use in our marketing or they're just the ones that I found most most helpful or useful so here's her having transformed the danger that she chose to work with for the day into a new capability from which she gets confidence. Oh, <laughs> that was me just checking back with my pencil original to see what, what was this supposed to say in the background? You know, painting in the backdrop and bringing my arrows back up and see how they work. And again, here I'll, I'll tweak back and forth and back and forth just to see what, what feels right here. So I've got my sort of radiating circles and I've put a glowing effect around those because <laughs> I do a lot of that. Um, and now Dan has briefed me here. This is the next day. So we've looked at it and he's given me some suggestions about how to how to place things um, or I think may, uh, sorry actually with this one it was me going back and I made a couple of little tweaks uh, to some radiating lines and speckles and stuff but then Dan briefed me and he said oh here so when you're in fear you're reacting but when you're moving into confidence you're transforming so just to just fills out the page a bit more so that is one page spread for one of the chapters and we do 10 chapters for most of the books and uh, it's it's kind of this process times 10 but it's a lot of fun for me to do and hopefully it adds an element to the books in addition to the text we do this multi-dimensional approach where there's there are audios there's videos there's the cartoons there's the text so you can get the message in a lot of different modalities and hopefully that helps people pick it up and use it and learn it and uh, have some success by applying the, the concept themselves. So I hope that this, this was fun for you and it was fun for me. Cheers.